All right, there's a rock solid principle in life that a lot of people still don't seem to understand. And that is that the government cannot give you something that it hasn't first taken or stolen from somebody else. Now, I got a letter today from President Donald J. Trump and I wanna read it to you, but I wanna read it through the filter, through the lenses of truth. <laughs> Now check this out. Don't want to read the Spanish part there. My fellow American, our great country is experiencing an unprecedented public health and economic challenge as a result of the global coronavirus pandemic. The first sentence contains a lie. There's no economic challenge. There's economic terrorism. And it wasn't foisted on us by some invisible virus. It was foisted on us by government. The government that takes from other people to give to somebody else. That's called the redistribution of wealth and it's inherently immoral. So sentence number one is a lie. Our top priority is your health and safety. We're from the government and we're here to help. I think you all know that I've always felt the Nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. You know why those are the nine most terrifying words in the English language? Because when the government says they're there to help you, they're actually there not for your health and your safety, but they're there to control you, take away your rights, and take away your wealth, which equals taking away your life. This is a super serious letter, guys, signed by President Donald J. Trump which a lot of people still seem to think it's okay to follow. As we wage total war on this invisible enemy. I'm gonna read that again. As we wage total war on this invisible enemy. Hmm, where have we heard something like that before? Let me see. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. In order to fight and defeat this enemy, it is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive. Wage a new all-out offensive. Remember, it wasn't a war on drugs, guys. It was a war on people. It's kind of like when Bush said, we're going to engage in the war on terrorism. Our war on terror begins with Al-Qaeda, but it does not end there. It will not end until every terrorist group of global reach has been found, stopped, and defeated. Now this war will not be like the war against Iraq a decade ago with the decisive liberation of territory and a swift conclusion. It will not look like the air war above Kosovo two years ago where no ground troops were used and not a single American was lost in combat. Our response involves far more than instant retaliation and isolated strikes. Americans should not expect one battle, but a lengthy campaign, unlike any other we have ever seen. It may include dramatic strikes visible on TV and covert operations, secret even in success. We will starve terrorists of funding turn them one against another, drive them from place to place until there is no refuge or no rest. And we will pursue nations that provide aid or safe haven to terrorism. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Any time the government engages in warfare. It's warfare, economic warfare, real physical warfare, sanctions which deprives people of food and medical supplies and things that they need to live. Anytime the government engages in warfare, it's against its own people. It's to the detriment of the people as they say they're there for your health and your safety. So he says, as we wage total war on this invisible enemy, we're also working around the clock to protect hardworking Americans like you from the consequences of the economic shutdown. That's the economic terrorism 
which is foisted on Americans and the entire world on behalf of and for the benefit of the international banking cartel known as the Federal Reserve and the International Monetary Fund, the most powerful organization in the entire world. We are fully committed to ensuring that you and your family have the support you need to get through this time. On March 27th, 2020, Congress, which is the opposite of progress, passed with overwhelming bipartisan support the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, or CARES Act, which I proudly signed into law. I want to thank the United States House of Representatives and the United States Senate for working so quickly with my administration to fast track this $2.2 trillion in much needed economic relief to who? The American people. First of all, it wasn't $2.2 trillion. It was $6.2 trillion. And here's the proof for that. Now, I'm going to sign this, and it's a great honor. $6.2 trillion. I've never signed anything with a T on it. I don't know if I can handle this one, Mitch. We can't chicken out at this point, can we? I don't think so, huh? All right, thank you all. Good, I wanted that to be a nice signature. That was So it wasn't $2.2 trillion, it was $6.2 trillion. So the question is, where'd all that money go, Trump? Oh, that's right. It went to the international banking cartel and the corporate oligarchs who rung up the corporate debt bubble. It wasn't an economic stimulus for the American people. It was a corporate slash banker bailout. But you're not going to see any of that here in this little letter right here from President Donald J. Trump. This includes fast and direct economic assistance to you. Oh, thank you, President Donald J. Trump. I am pleased to notify you that, as provided by the CARES Act, you are receiving an economic impact payment of $1,200 by direct deposit. We hope this payment provides meaningful support to you during this period. You know what this is like, them giving me this $1,200? It's like, a parasite, like a leech, sucking gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons, hundreds of gallons of blood from you over the course of years, and then just giving you back just a little bit of blood. But there's a catch, because the blood they give back to you doesn't include the proteins, plasma, platelets, and oxygen that you need to sustain life. It's gutted. It's gutted of all its nutrients. It's gutted of its value. And that's the same thing with this $1,200. It's gutted of its value. We're headed toward hyperinflation, guys. This $1,200 is one day only gonna be about $120. What they've done, what the government has done, what the Trump administration has done through the Zionist International Banking Cartel and Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, is they've reached into your pockets and they've gutted the dollars that you work for, the product of your time and laboring energies, they gutted it of its value. And then they're giving it back to you like they're the saviors. See, the government is good at one thing. They're good at breaking your legs, giving you a taxpayer funded crutch and saying, see, if it wasn't for the government, you wouldn't be able to walk. Look at us, we're helping you with this economic recovery stimulus bill. Aren't we great? We're the saviors. We're here to save the day. What did Bastiat say? The state is that great fiction by which everyone seeks to live at the expense of everyone else. Let's just continue on with this letter. Every citizen should take tremendous pride in the selflessness, courage, and compassion of our people. America's drive, determination, innovation, and sheer willpower have conquered every previous challenge, and they will conquer this one, too. Just as we have before, America will triumph yet again and rise to new heights of greatness. This is all word salad. This is all just nonsense. It's words without meaning. They don't care about you. They want to economically rape you. And that's exactly what we're seeing right here. This is economic terrorism. Make no mistake about it. We will do it together as one nation, stronger than ever before. Signed, President Donald 
J. Trump. The state will always be that great fiction by which everyone seeks to live at the expense of everyone else. See, all this happened for the benefit of the bankers and to the detriment of the American people. And like Bastiat said, when plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men living together in a society, they create for themselves in the course of time a legal system which authorizes it and a moral code which glorifies it. See, if you give a man a gun, he can rob a bank. But if you give a man a bank, he can rob the entire world. And that's exactly what this is right here. This is not a stimulus for the American people. This is a bailout for the international bankers and corporate oligarchs. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the Google Thought Police in the comments section below. And I'll see you guys in the next heavily censored shadow ban video. I consider this problem so urgent. I also found that it was scattered so much throughout the government with so much conflict without coordination that it had to be brought into the White House and consequently I have brought Dr. Jaffe into the White House directly reporting to me so that we have not only the responsibility but the authority to see that we wage this offensive effectively and in a coordinated way. The actors get pissed and start cursing. They're tired of rehearsing. They're ready to do the damn show. They're ready to go. You know what I mean? Fuck the quarantine. Fuck COVID-19. Fuck a fucking vaccine. Social engineering at the center stage. About to go full circle when we turn the page. Miss Deborah Burks, you old bitch. Putting COVID on old bits and certificates. It's ridiculous. We, we should, should be enraged and irate rate. at our newfound fate and change the current state of mind controls. As Mr. Gates pulls the levers of power from his ivory tower, he is a Zionist, a mad scientist.